What up traders, it's your boy Jay Pelly. Just wanna come here and do a review of today's trades, all right? So today was a pretty big day. Uh, today's P&L was about 7,700 something dollars. Um, and today was one of those big days where the plays just keep coming and you just take advantage of all of them. Um, but I still didn't catch all of them. This market's absolutely bananas and there's opportunity every single day um, as long as you you wait and be patient and take the right ones of course but today was one of those days where everything was just coming at me and i was just winning them all um not it's not always like this but i want to give you a show you the setups on the chart that i was taking all day um mostly on the options all right so traded uh, s p futures today and uh mostly options um on some individual stocks but uh yeah let's get into that video and you'll see how i'm going about trading options all right let's just jump right into it and uh start out with one of the trades i was holding from friday so friday at the close i actually bought some spy calls all right so these are the spy calls i bought over the weekend, here you see the P&L again, 7,780. Um, and 4,000 of that came from the SPY July 17th, 318 calls, all right? So when I'm trading options, I'll just put this out there uh, before we start. I'm going in with anywhere from 5,000 to like 20,000 at, at most times. Um, and sometimes more, sometimes less, but that's like the general average. So yes, it takes a lot of money to make a good amount of money um, fairly quickly if you know what you're doing. But trading naked options and naked naked uh, calls and puts is not the most profitable strategy, but if you know how to manage your risk, you can make it happen um, as I'm showing you. But 4,000 of that came from SPY, all right? So SPY um, on Friday is when I put this trade in. So I had it going over the weekend. Yeah, it's very risky play, but there was something on the chart that was showing me, all right, I think we're getting ready to break out here because if we look on, so I have a unique approach. I like to use the uh, market profile charts. Um, and if we saw on Friday where we closed that was right here. Friday was right here at 3178 around there, um, which is part of the lower edge of this balance area from June, okay? So like June 5th um, and June 6th, they're all, like if I unmerge this, there's four days right here that we balanced out and we, we rejected that 3220 level, right? So what I did was combine these, um, and again, this is a market profile chart. I have some more videos if you need to learn market profile on this channel, um, you could go through those, but this is a separate video, that's for a different time. Um, but look, Friday, we came in and we tested the lower end and I was thinking, you know, we could have went higher, but the market just simply ran out of time on Friday. So what I did was bought those, uh, 318 calls. So the market closed right around 3179. Um, so the closest at the money strike was, uh, uh, 318 on spy. So I used the futures, um, to do my analysis and then I'll go in and place the options on SPY, uh, which is the ETF that tracks the S&P. So that's that. But Friday was the telltale sign that, hey, something might be changing here um, because last week all we did was just chop around, right? Five days of just balance and chop. And then Friday, end of the day, we finally broke above the week's resistance and we came into this prior balance area above 3179.25. And that is where I was like, all right, we might be setting up for a big move here. That close on Friday was bullish in my opinion. Um, and today we saw some of that, some of that action early on. Um, so I quickly closed those calls. Uh, where's my thinker swim? Quickly closed those calls um, in the morning this morning so here we go and we'll take a look at this morning got a little drop at the open i was literally out of these uh right at the open pretty much okay all right so let's go over to see my fills and where i got out of this one this morning 
we go to monitor fills uh, all of these are from today it's only a couple trades I know it looks like a lot that's just uh, because I trade multiple contracts but let's look at spy I close these um, right at the open I actually had 40 of them on you see my exits 450 450 447 started coming down a bit so then I flattened them out um, around 438 was my last exit and that was right there at the open you see the time uh, 931 a.m. so yeah um, that was the first trade um, pretty much just closed the swing trade from overnight um, we did get a nice gap up uh, if you see Friday's close was like I said 318 3180 um, we got a, like a 20 point gap up so I had to take some profits right away those actually those contracts went to six dollars at some at the highest peak of today um, but we see we had a pretty crazy dump into the close um, but yeah that was the first trade what else did we have today next trade was on Netflix all right so Netflix the premiums were pretty damn crazy uh, well they're gonna be crazy all week we have earnings on Thursday and Netflix has just been very volatile because last week we had a huge run-up um, but this play all right so I have my levels we'll take a look at my levels first 555.91 and uh, 525.47 this was the value of Friday, all right? So, like I said, I'm using market profile charts for my analysis, and uh, that's where I'm getting these levels from. So, on, uh, this is actually Roku we're looking at on here, um, but the value areas from Friday, pretty much value areas where 70% of the volume was traded, 70% of the, where the time was spent, um, during a session all right so that's value um and the upper edge of value we call value area high lower edge is value area low so with that being said this morning uh we had a gap up above value um for netflix okay so we had a gap up above value for netflix and what do we do first five minutes this is a five minute chart um first five minutes what did we do we came down all the way down to value area high 555.91 and we held that level to the tick they pretty much front ran it because if you look we're like a dollar off or not even a dollar off of that value area high so it couldn't even get down there so that's bullish information for me um, I didn't want to hop right in at the open um, I wanted to wait for a pullback all right pullbacks are not always bad um, pullbacks are good they're confirmation but we got the pullback. Next five minute candle was uh, green. We had a nice bounce. And uh, that is where I entered the trade on this next green candle. So we could see this entry was 940. Um, I actually waited for that green candle to print. And I looked to see how the next one was gonna open up if we were gonna come back down and take that one out. Um, but yeah gave up some real estate not entering down here just so I could get the confirmation right sometimes you got to give up some real estate just so you could you know feel more comfortable getting into the trade and it's actually confirming but um, that being said we got that confirmation on this candle um, entered around here 940 and I quickly got out when we went up to 575 which was my target and how did I get the 575 target um, well, I just added 20 bucks to this value area high. Um, so if we see this balance area is 555.91 by 525, that's like 30 bucks. So actually, my target should have been 585. Um, but look, 575 looks a lot better there, huh? Just wicked right into it and then faded the rest of the day. Um, we'll come back to Netflix chart uh, in a little bit because I did take some more trades on Netflix. Um, on the downside later in the day but yeah you can see I bought 10 of those uh, 565 calls that's what I bought right here when we were breaking out bought the 565 calls the weeklies um, every time I'm day trading I'm trading the weeklies and yeah I bought those around $29 and then sold them at $30 uh, Wow, one minute. That was a one minute trade on Netflix. Jesus Christ. I didn't even know it was that quick, but that was that was nice. Uh one minute 
thousand dollars on Netflix. Um, again, in at twenty nine, out at thirty, and I had ten of them. So that was that trade. Um, and yeah, I covered somewhere into this next candle, <clears throat> or sold my position into that next candle. Um, what was next? Let's see what was next. Um, S and P futures. Okay, so I bought three at ten twelve a.m. So if we take a look at ES, um, I'm sure these will pop up if I do this. You can't see my trades on the screen on the options because I'm not trading the actual stock. I'm trading the options. Um, but 3204 was that first trade, right? 3204 um, was my entry. It got in at the market. And uh, I had a target at 3212. Didn't quite hold till 3212. Um, I got out near this first target, 3209.75. Um, but this was a play. Uh, if we look at the profile on S&P, this is how I'm trading the markets using market profile. Um, so what was this trade at 1014? Uh, 1014, all right. So in the morning, uh, we pushed up to this overnight high, bounced down a little bit during B period, and then... We flushed out some of these longs um, early in B period, right? So if you look on the right, this is a volume bar chart. Um, and this is what I like to use for my entries. So coming into uh, 10 o'clock, really, when B period opens up. Again, this is market profile stuff. So if you don't know, just look at my other videos. I'll try and do another one soon for like beginners. But B period opens up, we got a little flush, market was long overnight, so we needed some kind of correction, some kind of selling to the downside. And we didn't really get too much. So we didn't get too much. We got a little bit of a flush from people who bought in early today. Um, they got flushed out and then we quickly came back up. We quickly came back up and once we broke above the open, I was looking for a long and this market really wasn't pulling back. So I was like, all right, just gonna hop in near this overnight high if we start printing above it. Um, so we started printing above the overnight high. I got a fill right under it at 3204, like you saw. And I had a target 3212, which was this level right here you see on the chart, 3212.25. Uh, I didn't quite hold till 3212. Um, I was just, you know, monitoring price action and we started to dip down a bit, but we didn't really dip down too much. Could have held this trade a lot longer, uh, but it's it's all good. We snuck in uh, how many points on that trade? Uh, 3204 to 3207 with three contracts. Um, so that was like a $500 trade right there. Um, and yeah, that was trade number two for the day. Well, technically trade number three. Um, but next trade, next up, what do we got? Next up, we got Roku, Roku, Roku. 160 calls around 10.15 a.m. All right, so let's take a look at Roku. Roku. So Roku was the same kind of thing as Netflix, right? Um, same kind of thing as Netflix and uh, yeah same kind of scenario right value area high value area low from Friday session okay um, and coming into the open I was looking for the same thing the pullback down to value area high 157.79 we didn't get that we didn't get that right off the open um, so I waited a little bit I didn't get in right away I waited for the market to come down, give me a pullback, and hold this level. Because um, I didn't you know, feel comfortable getting in with this big surge at the open. Um, I wanted the market to pull back and hold so I could actually get a nice entry. Um, and that was the case here. It took a little time, but there was a few wicks into this level, like exactly into the level. And uh, it took me a while to, to hit the trigger and actually get into these Roku calls um, because I was like, all right, I really would have liked this to bounce quicker than this. You know, it printed like one, two, three, four, four, five minute candles. So it was like 20 minutes. I was looking at this like, all right, when's it going to move? 
and then I saw this one. I was like, okay, let's just test it out. Um, so I went in on the 160 calls, and where did I get out? 160 calls. I bought them for around eight dollars. And uh, oh, this was the first trade. I actually scratched it. Yeah, so I didn't even make money on this one. Made like thirty dollars on this one, um, but it ran to my targets, and I uh, I bitched out pretty much. I didn't I didn't hold the trade because uh, we bumped into this high of the day, which if I scroll back so you can't see it, um, like I said, I waited for this candle to get in, and then on the next candle. Uh, am I gonna be able to do this? Yeah, so on the next candle, it didn't really, oops, there we go. So next candle, we see we came into this uh, previous high of the day, right? This high of the day was around 162, and we didn't break it there, so I was like, oh, fuck. Let me just get out before I waste the good day. Um, and then I, I cut them off right there. Sure enough, next few candles come, boom, right to 165 target. And I was like, all right, I'm a jerk, whatever. Um, didn't hold that one as long as I should have. So that was that trade, kind of like a scratch. Um, kind of like a scratch. And then, oh yeah, this is the exit on ES, 3207. And the next trade, I actually bought the puts on the... I bought the puts on this um, Roku, right? I bought the puts on Roku. When? When was this? When was this? Bought the puts on Roku. 160 puts um, at $8.45. $8.45 at $2.08. All right, so $2.08. Where's $2.08? $14.08. I was right around here. Um, and what happened? Well, Roku, we hit those upper targets faded 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 then we came back into value so i was like all right coming back into value i'm gonna get short this thing with a target at 151.31 that's just the rules for uh how you play value and balance areas um so once we faded back into value this thing was looking pretty weak the market started selling off too so it was a it was a good play um and i bought the puts what puts were those the 160s right yeah I bought the 160 puts uh, for $8.45. Again, I was in with 10, um, and I was out at 8.95. Uh, how long was that trade? Another one-minute trade. So the market was just ripping into my targets, um, or just pretty much printing money quickly. So I was like, all right, I'm just gonna take my money here. Um, yeah, could have let it run, um, but I was just looking for a quick trade. Uh, and it, it started moving pretty quick um, and I actually got back in later on Roku as well so that was the next trade Roku puts and then we did it again 160 puts I got in again 890 so I was paying a little oh no 880 I was paying a little more now you see that um, so after I got out I was like oh shit this thing is still looking pretty weak and uh, got back in um, around 224. So 224, this thing was breaking below value now. So again, we came into value. Target was the other side, 151.31. Now we're printing below value. And I'm like, oh shit, this thing is going to go even more now. So I got into those uh, 160 puts again, paid a little more. And same thing, had a lower target, 148.31. And I was out of this trade, uh, this one was three minutes, right? So that one took a little longer. <laughs> In at 880, out at 935. Um, and then we put in a trade on uh, S&P, the futures, at 3195.50. So let's take a look at 3195.50 or whatever that was. Uh, yeah, 3195.50 uh, went in with three and covered at 3193.5, which I let a lot of profits go on the table here. This thing ripped another 40 points on me. 40 points. It was the end of the day, and I was like, all right, really, is it going to sell off that hard? Um, so I covered it pretty quickly. Um, as we came down to 
this uh, previous low of the day, uh, we were really just testing it right there. So I covered five minutes later, voila, it keeps breaking. <laughs> so yeah, got to do a little better with the exits here on S&P um, and my other trade. But no complaints, you're not going to catch the whole move every time. But yeah, that was a nice one. That was a two minute trade right there. Um, and then the final, we're coming into the final trades of the day. Netflix, we bought the 550, 545 puts for $28.55. Those quickly went to $29. And they actually went to $30 a couple minutes after I got out. Um, but that was a two minute trade right there. Let's take a look at Netflix real quick. Netflix made a couple plays today. The market was just blessing us with opportunities. Um, but Netflix, Netflix, Netflix was around 330, 323. Where was price at 323? Well, you guessed it, it was back in value, right? So remember earlier where price was above value, above this 555.91? Well, once the move faded, similar to Roku, once the move faded, got back into value, I wanted to be short down to 525.47. That's what I did. Um, I didn't catch the whole move. I actually got in right here um, as we were testing these lows, 542 lows. Got in there, got out somewhere around here on this next candle. Again, could have waited a little bit, let it print some more money. Um, and then the final trade was another Roku 152.5 put for 680 out at $7. That was a two minute trade again around 330. Roku around 330. Uh, we retested this. Oh no, this is when it was still breaking right below. So 151.31 got broken. I was like, all right, we're headed lower. And uh, hopped in those puts and covered them a couple minutes later. But yeah, those were the plays I took today. Um, and yeah, it was mostly options. And uh, yeah, there you go. Um, oh, it looks like the ES trade disappeared. So the ES, the futures, um, P&Ls go away after 5 o'clock. They reset. Um, so that's why the P&L changed a little bit on me during this video. But um, we're going to end it with some levels on the S&P futures. If you're a pajama trader and you like trading the overnight session, hopefully this will help you out. Um, but yeah, so basically what I'm looking at for tonight, uh, we could go ahead and mark this up here right now. Value area low. So today's value area low for the S&P was 3188.25. Um, and yeah, I, I like to mark this up manually after each session. Uh, we'll keep the overnight highs and lows where they're at. Previous high. Oh. That's all the volume. So we had 2 million contracts traded today on the S&P. Not bad. Um, previous high was up here at 32.26.75. Previous low is down here. Um, and then we closed right here. All right. So these are the levels for tonight. If you want to see it on a candlestick chart, which I'm sure you're more familiar with um, that's what it looks like so these are going to be the levels for tonight tonight we'll see where we open up um, a key level I'll be watching for tonight is this today's low uh, so if we start trading below 3140 uh, we might come back and retest Friday's uh, Friday's low 3126 all right so Friday's low is 3126.50. If we start breaking below 3140, I might take a short tonight if I'm around trading um, down to Friday's low 3126. I'm flat going into going into tonight, so I, I have no positions on today uh, or tonight rather. And uh, 
yeah, that's mainly what I'll be watching for. If we do break below this 3140s, we could see some more downside tonight. 3126 and a quarter will be the first level to watch for. Um, and then if we come back on the bigger picture, um, below there we got uh, Thursday's value area low around 31.24 and then down to this untraded point of control 31.03. Uh, so yeah, we could see some more downside. This was a pretty big dump for the end of the day. Um, as traders were thinking, you know, all right, back into the 3200s, we're good to go, back up to all time highs. They, whew, people must have got smoked today. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much what I'm looking for. Or if we do stay above um, in today's range, then look for a rotation back up to value area low, 3188. So if we stay above 3140 all night, um, then look for a rotation back up to 3188s tonight. Could happen. It's just the markets, it's just how the markets are. Um, end of the day, we get some dumps, and during the night, we'll see it come right back up. Um, doesn't happen all the time. That's just two scenarios I just gave you for tonight um, that I will be looking for. So, with that being said, this is a long video, but I hope you guys learned something. Um, if you want to come trade live with me every day, so like I'm making this video after the market, um, when the market's open, I will be sharing my screen just like this every single morning. Um, and you'll get to, I'll call out the trades I'm getting into. Um, call out what I'm seeing on the charts and it's just much easier. I have a discord chat too But it's just much easier doing it live and just talking um, instead of you know typing <laughs> But that's just uh, my preference people in the chat learn a lot um, From watching the the live streams and seeing what I do how I react to different scenarios um, what I look for with my entries, but yeah, it's pretty much like a live educational Type thing trade desk virtual trade desk thing, but if you want access to it, just click the link down below this video and uh, You could get access and we'll you know, you'll see me trade live every single morning um, Every morning I post a little link in the discord and then you could hop on and chat with me Take the same trades if you want, um, but yeah, I'll just show you what I'm doing, pretty much um, how I'm using market profile to trade any market. But with that being said, hope you guys have a great night. This was a very long video, um, but it's filled with some nuggets. And uh, yeah, I got to get out of here. Time to go eat some dinner. See you guys on the live stream tomorrow. Peace.